Hello, friends. Welcome today. We are go I, we're going to have a good time today because I've got two of the most important people in the whole world, in my world, with me today. I got my wife and my mother-in-law. That's right, uh, Cindy and Mary Ann. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So we're uh, here to keep him in line today. No. We're we're going to talk about something really, really important today, and that's how to keep the love fire going in our marriage and in our relationship. Isn't that important? Very yeah. important. Yes. So let's start with a prayer, okay? All right. Father in heaven, you're a good God, and we want to invite you because how can we keep the love fire burning if you don't burn in our heart? So please, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, speak to all of us, Lord, and teach us today how to keep the love fire burning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I, I think we'd all agree that, it, that it's pretty easy to fall in love. What's hard is to stay in love, right? That is true. Yeah. Did you know that over 50% of the people that get married now end up in divorce? Isn't wow. that terrible? Yes. I mean, and think about, think about the lives that are affected. I mean, it's so the, easy to get married, but it's not near as easy to get unmarried. Yeah. It's a lot more to well, it. Well, yeah, because, because people's lives are affected in it. You've right. got children, and, yeah. uh, and, and, then, and then all the, you know, you've got, you got in-laws, and you get connected, and all these relationships. It just does a lot of hurt. Well, there's a lot more involved than just yourself. You know, yeah. you, it, it's far impacting if you just decide, I don't want this anymore. Yeah. So we see this all the time. We see a lot of hurt. And would that be God's will? No. no. No, it's not God's will. It's not part of God's plan. Uh, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, we, we get the picture at the very beginning that it was God's plan that a family, that a, that, that, that a, a husband, that a man and woman would come together and they would leave their families and they would stay together. So it's, we know it's God's will. Genesis 2.24 says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Now that's marriage. That's marriage right here. And they shall become one flesh. Now, so we know that it's God's will that to keep the love fire burning. We know that it's God's will. Now, does that say it's easy? But is it easy, Marianne? No. No, it's not. Is it easy, Cindy? No. You didn't have to say no quite that way. You could have said, well, it's kind of easy with Rick. You know what? It's gotten easier, though. It's gotten easier, yeah. isn't it? Thank you, baby. After Thank you. 53 yeah. years, it gets easier. It's got, it's got easier after 50 after. years or so, huh? Yeah. So, yeah, but God is going to help, help us. Now, I think one of the first things that, that I want to bring out today that, that the Bible is going to prove is that love is more than a feeling. Mm. That's right. Love is more than a feeling. See, God commands us to love one another. He commands it. He can't command us about our feelings because our feelings are just feelings. We can't rely on our feelings. Right. But love is so much more. Now, love probably started, you know, with a feeling. I remember when I first met Cindy, you know, I went, wah, 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 you know. <laughs> With my heart, I mean, she's beautiful. And she was, she, I was going to say she was more beautiful back then, but I think she's more beautiful each day. So anyway, mm -hmm. uh, when I first met her, it was probably the feeling was involved, of course. But as time went on, it took more than a feeling. Uh, believe it or not, you know, sometimes I might, in the past, have not always been the most loving person in the world. And so Cindy had to choose to love me. She chose to love me, even at times I was unlovable. But now, if you were to ask her, she would say that that was the best decision she's ever made in her whole life, right? Because because Absolutely. because she because now she's got me trained. She's got I, me trained just the way she wants me. We've she, come a long way. Yeah, she tells me to jump, and I say, "How far, sweetie?" And 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 uh, and. and and but and we and I always I always you know I always let her get her way. I mean you know any time we get an argument, it's her way. But we've got this one little rule: I get the last word. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> so anyway, it's part of God's well, plan. I, I uh, would that just we like stay to together. say that you know also you you mentioned okay it's easy to fall in love, but yes. you know keeping that heartburn going. But you you just think about it when you. Whether you got married as a, a really young uh, couple starting out, or whether you have you're doing Plan B later in life, you know, at later, you're still 
you know, you're coming together, and at first it's so exciting. You yes. know, all the new hopes, dreams, aspirations. You, you're, 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 you're meeting new people, and you're new side of your family, and there's all that. But then reality sets in, mm-hmm. and that's where we we get challenged sometimes in our marriages and our yeah. After the honeymoon gets over with, <laughs> and everything. But so today, I think probably the most important thing that we could share with you out there that's watching and listening is the very fact that love is so much more than, than, than just feeling, that it's a choice. And, and God gives us some very simple instructions on this. In, in, in one of the most important chapters in the Bible relating to relationships uh, and especially marriages. So open up your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. What we're going to do is we're going to pick up at verse 4. Now, when you find your way there, you're going to see that God has given us some very simple instructions here on how you can keep your love fire burning in your home and in your relationship and marriage. So let me start out here. And I'm going to be reading from the NIV version here. I normally like to, to read from the New King James Version, but I like the way the NIV draws this out here in our more common day language. It says, love is patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. Love is not proud. Love does not dishonor others. Love is not self-seeking. Now these these are all... Remember, these are not feelings. This is a choice you make. These are choices you make here. Love is not easily angered. Uh, Love keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects. Love always trusts. Love always hopes. Love always perseveres. And in verse 8, on the first part there, love never fails. Or I could even go further and say, this kind of love never fails. I actually didn't even know I had this in my Bible. And when we sat down here just a few minutes ago, this card fell out and I went, oh. How fitting. And it's, I don't know if they can see it, but it says love never gives up. And yeah. that's 1 Corinthians 13. And and it, that right there is, is a lot of hope for yeah, all of that us. Gives to us know hope. that love does not give up. We might give up, but God's love never fails. Never fails. So I kind of thought that we could start with you, Marianne. If we could get started with you, because, you know, you you've been married... 50 plus years. We'll just say it like that. And uh, <laughs> dear, anybody that's married 50 years, you've been tested. I, yeah. You've I been think they need tests. a gold medal. You, you need a gold medal. Isn't that, what they call, isn't that the golden 50 the years ago? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. yeah. Very good point, Cindy. So uh, when you've been married 50 years, you've been through the test. You, your love has been tested. You Absolutely. went through yep. things. You went through a, a lot of the things that, that 1 Corinthians 13 talked about that we've got to endure. You've got to have went through that. You've got to have learned the patience and, and all these other things and everything. So um, I, I guess, let me just tell us a little bit about yourself. How, for example, what uh, <laughs> when, did, when did you and MR meet? Uh, we met in October of 19... 19- 1967. Okay. I worked at an ammunition plant in Texarkana, Mm -hmm. Day and Zimmerman, and he did too. I rode to work with a guy every night, and we stopped at a little place in Nash, Texas called Saunders Restaurant. And he came to that same restaurant every night, but he was always by himself. Yeah. And he was a cowboy. And he walked in that door with a blue shirt on and a cowboy hat. And I thought he was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen. Tall drink of water, huh? (laughs) And every night, we would stop at this restaurant, and here he'd come. Here he'd come in. And he was a millwright at Uh the plant. And this rocked on for several weeks. And one night, I came to work by myself. The guy that I rode with was sick, and I rode by myself. And I had this little yellow Corvair, (laughs) sporty-looking and I was outside fixing to leave, and I got in my car to leave, and he was sitting in the window looking, and he motioned to me, can I go? <laughs> and I said, no. Oh. <laughs> and he did, and we didn't go to work that night. <laughs> you <so>. didn't? <laughs> we talked, and we talked, and we met, and we knew 
we didn't know any, we didn't even know each other's name. <laughs> and we were married then in May of 1968, which was about six months later. <laughs> okay, very that, that yeah. Well, tell me tell me this. So y'all y'all been married 50 plus years. You've you've went through some hard times. You, you apparently you you have, and this is not. I'm not asking you to share all that. But what I would like you to do, because there's people out there that need to hear what you're going to share here. What advice can you share with with those that are listening out there? That's going to help them through the hard times. Maybe there's probably people out there watching or, or listening, or that will watch or listen. Uh, that that's that's going through or will be going through a hard time. What what's something that sticks out? that helped you out to get through those tough times? Well, one thing for certain, you've got to be on the same page. Mm -hmm. We have cows. We've had always had cows from day one. And if the husband likes the cows and the wife don't like the cows, it's not a good relationship. Oh, I thought okay. I was going to say right. that uh. if you weren't on the same page, you just send him out to stay no, with the cows. You've got, <laughs> you got to go. And I, I encountered a, real, uh, a job one time. I decided to sell Mary Kay makeup. You've got to, he was, he supported me. You have to be supportive of each other for it to work, you yeah. know. And we have a, a, a deal. I mean, he eats in the living room. I take him his food. Every I, I wait on him. I like that. Food. But he does things for me in return. I do things for him. My mom always said, I wouldn't wait on him for nothing. <laughs> but you, 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 you just do things for each other. He does things for me that... A lot of people wouldn't do. He cuts my toenails. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people. Okay. Wouldn't I'm listening. You heard, you okay. Heard it here. Okay. All right. I'm listening to her, and I know you are too. So love, love helps wash the dishes. Love he helps the dishes. helps. Love does things. That's right. Helps love, the real, cows love in the real love, real love, real love. <laughs> Is doing things for your spouse to let you know I care about you. That's right. Love means I'm putting I'm putting your needs above my needs. That's right. Okay. Very. Good. I worked a job in Texarkana for 27 years, and he washed the dishes, and he he would hang the clothes yeah. out. I would wash them, but he would hang them out. But there's just so many things that yeah. that they do that you know okay. you just it's just you just do i like that mary so if you want to keep the love fire burning in your home you do things for others mm -hmm. you 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 love helps wash the dishes make the bed love gets involved uh with all these things so oh, thank yeah. you that's really good oh yeah um i've got an you got a, a comment because i got another I question i probably have a lot but i'll okay. hold Let them me, in reserve the, for i want to because we don't have a lot of time so i want to touch on some things that are really important that might be something you're going through now it's quite possible that if you're out there watching or listening that that what i'm about to say you go oh yes i want to hear that tell me marianne and cindy i want to know what both of you think how do you handle disagreements because we're human beings, we are going. We are not. We're wired differently from each other. We are selfish by nature, right? And, and so, how do you handle disagreements? Because there's going to well, be things come up. Some little disagreements, but then you've got big disagreements. Do you so, want me to share the BC way or the after BC way? <laughs> I think after BC. That's before Christ in our in our relationship. So <laughs> in the past, um, really. I don't know that we ever had little disagreements. They seem to always morph into pretty big disagreements. And um, <laughs> we didn't handle them very well. Before we before we gave our life to the Lord. Yeah. But it's so comforting to know that I, I know without a doubt that if it's not next week or in the next month or even next year, there could be something come up that we just... We're just not sure we see eye to eye on. Mm -hmm. But I now know without a shadow of a doubt what we're going to do. One of us, or both of us, will mm -hmm. say, we're not going to, we, and I hear you say this often, we're not going to figure this out. That's right. So we're going to need to take it to God in prayer. And so for me and my house, we have chosen to serve the Lord. And that also means the good times, the bad times, the disagreements. And so we will drop to our knees right then yeah. and, and ask God. But um, it's not easy because honestly that, I mean, sometimes you don't feel like praying when the disagreements are, mm -hmm. you know, 
but we really don't have that many to be honest. Right. Yeah. I mean, not anymore. Not anymore. But we, like Cindy says, what we do when we come up on something that 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 we are not seeing eye to eye on, and we do we pray about everything. I'll be honest, we do. Uh, we, because we've learned that if we do it God's way, it really is the best way. It's so we do way. pray and we ask for God's leading and guiding in what some people would call little bitty stuff. We, we do that. And it's just always our life has been so much better since Amen. we made a decision to do that. A family that prays together stays together. And you can, you can write that down. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we are selfish people. Uh, most marriages break up because the people are so selfish. They're just so selfish. I, I actually um, uh, had a conversation with someone recently. We were talking about relationships, and this person has really just not found that one whom his heart, you know, longs to be with. And and he was very honest. And uh, I think if we were all, he said, I don't know about going into a relationship because I'm kind of selfish. I mm-hmm. don't know if. I can share my my life, my I mean, just being honest. Mm-hmm. And honestly, none of us probably can do that unless yeah. we we are submissive to Christ and Him being the center of yeah. our home. I think we've got to have Jesus in the center. So, Miriam, what was you thinking about that? How how have <clears throat> you how have you and Mr. dealt with those major disagreements? He just does what she says. He just no. does <laughs> what I say. Is right. <laughs> well, we don't have big disagreements anymore yeah what you know, we have over the years mm-hmm. and you know over the years when you're young and you disagree you get angry at each other and you don't you don't you mostly don't talk about it you know yeah, yeah. but now we mostly disagree we disagree on little things but i mm-hmm. usually give in i yeah. mean you know <laughs> we put new carpet in our house not long ago and and he wanted carpet down the hall and i didn't want carpet down the hall because you have to go to the bathroom. Is there carpet down the hall? There is carpet down the hall. <laughs> yeah. I, every time I go to the bathroom, I say, I cannot believe you <laughs> talked me into putting carpet down this it's, hall. It's warmer, though. It's warmer. <laughs> it looks good, but it's not feasible. Uh-huh. So we still have But you compromised. Okay. I did. I just... Yeah. I compromise. So, 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 uh, one way then I hear you're telling me that helps here. You got to say, is this is this that is, big a deal? Is, is it yeah. worth? It? It's just is it, yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's just okay. stuff. All right, good, good. I was right. thinking about before we before we move on. There was a scripture that I had uh, kind of marked earlier, and, and when I was thinking about you saying how you do things that you know he likes to do, and he'll do things he knows you like to, do. and we do that too. I yeah. mean, how many of you men that are watching love to go shopping? Probably zero. Well, he loves it. He, he'll go. He he's happy to go shopping. He does with him, too. But I do stuff with him that he likes to. But Hebrews ten twenty four says, and let us consider each other. Yeah. Consider each other carefully for the purpose of sparking love. Oh, I and like good that. deeds. That's a good point, Cindy. It's a very. Yeah. It's, it, it is very applicable because when you step back and go, I really don't like to go fishing, yeah. but I know. He does. We don't go fishing, but I mean, we, we fish would. For <laughs> Our boys love yeah. fishing, but um, you know, when you do that, when you take that step and you invest in that, it, it sparks like you know she really cares about me. Yeah. He's really he, he's concerned about things I want to. It, it, the The Bible says it sparks love and good deeds good when point. you consider carefully yeah. those those things for each other. Good point. All right, the Bible says in, in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, we just read it, that love is patient. Love is patient. Now, I know that it's pretty easy to be love, loving and patient and kind and not rude. These are all the things that's talking about here. Uh, to, and even, even, even says, you know, uh, uh, not, to, not to, to get angry that easy. But what about, the, what about that thing, Mary Ann? <laughs> And Cindy, you can go ahead and be out. What about that thing that just seems to get on your life's nerves? What about that thing they just keep doing over and over and over and over? What do you, I mean, let's be real. That's that's part of being married, you know. So what do you do? What do you do about that? You pray a lot. <laughs> you just overlook a lot of it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Well, you know what? Honestly, I'm sitting here thinking. I'm, I'm being straight up. I'm like, I'm trying to think. Is there any anything that you... I don't think there's anything sweet? that you do that Thank gets you, on sweet. my nerves. No. Well, <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna tell you why. And that's, that's a I'm going to tell you... So we, we're really... Because, because I used to do a lot of things that got on her nerves a lot. 
But I that can, was before. Yeah, that was before. List, yeah, that but. was before Christ. First uh, Peter chapter four verse eight. First Peter chapter four verse eight. And I'll just read it to you here. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover up a multitude yes, of that was sins. The one I had more multitude. Yeah. You know, if here, here, let's just be. We're humans, right? And we're we've got things. We're we're gonna say things. We're gonna do things. We've got these little habits, you know, that 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 we've had all our life, and and uh, they're just gonna be part of a relationship. But here's here's the advice that God's given us here: Don't focus on those things. Just don't get don't don't get eat up. Don't I let them something. don't let them become a mountain. <laughs> Uh, because if you do that, that you will make a mountain out of a molehill. Have you heard that before? Uh, if, if all you do is focus on that problem or whatever that is, it's It'll going to get bigger. bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger. But if you instead you focus on loving and being kind and being patient, God is going to give you the strength to do that. Uh, it, and it's going that problem is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. What was you going to say? Well, I thought of something. I won't tell them though, honey. I'll keep it a secret. But um, but you just gave the answer that I would give. I just I used to. I would it might would bother me, but now I just. It's something he likes to do. Apparently, yeah, it's something he enjoys doing. So, you know. <laughs> let's don't He's give any worried. examples. <laughs> no, let's don't give any examples for sure. I, I'll keep it a second. I ain't got a clue what she's talking about. I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the truth is, that is what you do. And, you know, um, I work from home primarily now. And he listens to me sometimes and grades me on my my phone calls um, to my pet. He doesn't listen to the call, but I mean, he's he can hear what I say, the response. He can hear my tone of voice and those kind of things. And and I got off the phone last week with, with someone, the nicest man. And, you know, he was so easy to help. Yes. He could have asked me 20 questions and had me do 20 things that normally would maybe kind of bother me a little, but I didn't mind helping him. Why? Because he, he so reciprocated. Nice. He was so nice. But sometimes I have some challenging yeah. patients and he can tell that it was a little difficult. And so my tidbit here and the point of me sharing that is that we should all strive in relationships, whether you're married, whether you're dating, uh, whether you're, um, I mean, moms, uh, children, whatever. Any kind of relationship. Any kind of relationship. We should really strive to give our very best in kindness because that just, it seems to, to light a fire, you know, to the point where you, you want to do things, like I yes. said, for people. You want to, you, I mean, and that's because God is in us, but it sure helps if we can strive to cultivate the character of Christ Absolutely. in our Same life. Thing. If we spend time with God, if we're reading his word and we see what Christ looks like, we should want to emulate that. And so that spills over into all of our relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. And I've learned to love Matt Dillon. I, you know, I've, I've watched Matt Dillon. <laughs> Matt Dillon. <laughs> Gun smoke. Oh, yeah. That's his favorite thing is watching yeah. Matt Dillon. And I've learned to love Matt yeah. Dillon. There you go. There you go. Okay. These are real <laughs> practical solutions. And they, they really come from the Bible. This is not Dr. Phil. This is the Bible. This is God telling you this right here. Uh, uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5, one thing that that uh, that God tells us to do, if you want to keep the, your love fire burning, you've got to choose. Now, this is so important. Choose, choose not to be slow to anger. Choose to be slow to anger. I mean, I, I used to pride myself on. Well, I have a little short temper and and everything. And I and and if you don't brattle that, it will get worse. And but but the Bible says if you choose choose to do this. D- be slow to anger. And each one of these commands that God gives us within the command itself is the power to do it. Yeah. Just like the oak tree is in the acorn, the very, if God tells you to be slow to anger, it, through the power of Jesus Christ living in you, you can be slow to anger. But you've got to choose to do it yeah. and rely on Him for that strength. And the very, the very, it, it, that's the first part of, Rev, of 1 Corinthians 13 in verse 5. And then the Bible says this right here. It says in the last part, it says, love keeps no record of wrong. That's a big Love keeps no record of wrong. Uh, It says, you know, in other words, uh, it says, it says, you know, don't go dragging up every time that you get in a little spit or spat. Don't be dragging up 
all those old bones from the past. Yeah. Don't well, dwell on your past. It will destroy your future. Hey, yeah. repeat that one more time. Don't dwell on your past. It will destroy your future. Good advice. Well, Good advice. Ironic that the three of us are sitting here because when, when you and I were having really uh, difficult, strong difficulty in our marriage and challenges, mm -hmm. I, you know, I would call my mom and I would tell her everything. everything. And that was not good for... It was for, not good for our relationship. No, no. for sure <laughs> no. it was not. But it wasn't Because that was your little baby. That's right. I right. understand totally. Now, I didn't understand it then, but I understand it 100% now. Totally. But it, it wasn't good for me either because that just... I, I, I would hear myself repeat and spew the negativity. Yeah. And so I should have been talking more, you know, to, to God about this. Yeah. And eventually I did learn to do that. But um, just a little freebie there, you know. It's you. It's fun to have someone that you trust that you yeah. need to talk. But it probably shouldn't be your mother. But <laughs> no, because I probably said punch him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No. But it, it it really does make a difference because all of these things actually build up and build up, and then to the point where. And same thing at work. I would tell my girlfriends, and we would, and you know all that. And by the time I got home, I was already mad at him. You know, right? Just because I done that but i want to share another scripture um that kind of goes along with something okay. you said um ephesians chapter 4 uh 2 and 3 ephesians 4 2 and 3 conduct yourselves with all humility gentleness and patience yeah accept each other with love and make an effort to preserve the unity of the spirit with the peace that ties you together amen we do this it makes a huge difference in yeah. our family and our relationships. You know, uh, a friend of mine the other day said, talking about his wife, he said, she got historical with me. And I, <laughs> I, I said, historical? He, he's, I said, you mean hysterical? 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 No, historical. Historical. And she gets dragging up the past. Right. Yeah, so mm -hmm. if the, the, the marriages that, that, that flourish, tip, you know, the marriages that, that flourish are those marriages that are 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 quick forgetters. When you forget about those things, just don't don't dwell on them. Yeah, right. Another another scripture I was going to share is Proverbs seventeen nine. He who covers a transgression, in other words, covers it up, just remembers it no more, uh, seeks love. But but he who repeats the matter separates friends. Amen. So that's very important Amen. there. Very good scripture there. If you if you cover it up, if you just choose. To yeah. put it in the past. Right. I have, like Jesus. Now, all these, remember, these attributes here are all all attributes of Jesus Christ. That's right. These are all all about Jesus. Is a, a, I had a total self, uh, selfless love for us. Right. And selfishness and love are totally opposite of each other. It's all, all of these attributes are about putting others' needs before right. your needs. Yeah. So I choose not to remember all the things that, that all the bones of the past, I choose not to remember that. And as I do that, mm -hmm. the Bible says that I am seeking love yeah. and, and building love. These yeah. are these are powerful. These this is biblical, friends. These <clears throat> this is not this is not uh, just you know some type of marriage uh, you know betterment. This is psycho not psychology. This is Bible B I B L E on how to have a better and stronger marriage here. Yeah. So if you want to keep the love fire burning. Be a good forgetter. So, how are you doing so far on all these? I hope you're doing good. I hope I hope that we're we're learning here uh, how to get better. Now, here here's a here's uh, here's another very important in First Corinthians thirteen seven. It says, if we want that love to lies, if we want the love to lies, we've got to trust each mm -hmm. other. We've got to trust each other. There's got to be a matter of trust mm -hmm. in a relationship. Right. Amen. So uh, I, know, I know, you know, a, a lot of people, your first thoughts there is, well, I've got to trust my spouse, you know, that they're being faithful to me. And yes, that's very true. I mean, sure. I know a lot of marriages and probably you do too, that they're, they, they're, they're just fitting up because it, they, they don't, they the don't, trust they, has they, been broken. they, they right. don't trust right. each other and they don't. And friends, if you can't trust each other, you can't love each other. Yeah. I mean, the Bible says if by love, love, trust, yeah. love believes. But it even goes a lot deeper than than the than the uh, than the 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 the, the fair affair or anything like right. that. It's more like I believe in my wife. Absolutely, I trust in her. Yeah, I, I would 
I wasn't going to share this, but I, I do feel strongly impressed because um, there are a lot of people who have had their hearts broken by uh, by some challenges with uh, in, infidelity in a marriage. And mm-hmm. I, I really, like I said, I didn't plan to talk about this, but this question is repeatedly asked over and over. For these couples, they want to make it work. They, they yeah. don't want to let, well, that's a bad thing and it happened and it, it is really hurtful. Many couples want to put it behind them. They yeah. say, we really want to make it. We have sat in face-to-face with so many people like, we don't want this to break up our marriage. We, we mm-hmm. want to move on. But, but you can see that usually one or the other, sometimes it's the man, sometimes it's the wife, that are, they're just struggling. Like, how, how can I ever trust, trust them family. again? Yeah. And, and honestly, the fact is, is we've got to trust Jesus. That's right. We've got to put all of our hope and faith in Jesus because you know what? People are going to fail us. People are going to let us down yeah. and we're going to have some challenges. But we must make that commitment to that we're going to choose Christ because you know what? It's Christ and His Holy Spirit that convicts us to to, to do better and to want to be like Him. So uh, yes, there's a lot of applicable applicable things that we will share with them that they can do. But above all, they're going to need to put their yeah. trust in Christ so, to get them through it. Cindy's 100% right there. there. There's probably some people out there watching right now or listening or that's going to listen or watch that says, you know, how can I trust them? You know, they have hurt right. me so deeply. You know, you don't know them. You don't, yeah. they have let me down. You, you can't do it. What do you, so what do you do when you can't trust your spouse? You trust Jesus. You trust Jesus. You trust God. Trust and and uh, obey. Or or when you don't feel like you love. uh, You know, same thing. And and I'll just, this is, I'm not going into testimony time here, but but the reason I'm here today is because of that. When Cindy could not trust me, you know, when she couldn't trust me, when, when she could not trust me, she trusted God. And when she started trusting God and gave it, completely to him something happened in her that changed my life forever changed my and life. and i want you to know i i want you to know i would not be the man today if she hadn't if she hadn't trusted in god and if she trusted in god god started working in her heart and he started working in my heart and i want you to know i would never let this woman down i would rather die than let this woman down and that's what happens when you bring god in into your relationship when you tr- when you make that decision yeah. that you're going to trust god with your relationship he can work miracles beyond what you could ever think or imagine he says if i leave him he's coming with that's me that's right <laughs> i said i said honey you can leave if you want to but i I'm but, right but i'm you. packing my bags and i'm walking out that door with you let's go well, I'll tell you, too, it took a long time if, after y'all patched things up and got patched on the right path. Up, it a took good. us a long time to trust him again. That's right. To, yeah. to know yeah, that he's going to treat my daughter real. right. That, that, that I was for real. That's for real. But, it took us a long time. But do you know why? Because now now I know that 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 I would not only be letting her down, but I'd be letting God down. Yeah. You understand. Absolutely. That's the reason it's so important to bring God into your relationship. And I, I can say with certainty that God can restore what the locust has stolen yeah. because even uh, my son Tyler, he doesn't, um, I don't know, it seems like he does it just at the least unexpected times, but he will call and he will he will thank him and say, thank you because I don't have to worry about my mom. I know that you love my mm-hmm. mom more than yes. anything. And he uh, he just is so appreciative of that. And he has watched. But I can assure you there's it it, ta- it, it can take some time. But, but it can be better than it was ever before. Yeah. I can promise you that. That's right. God can bring good uh, out of what the devil is meant for bad. Absolutely. He, and God can restore what the locusts have eaten. So do you want to do you want to keep the love fire burning in your home? Trust each other. Mm-hmm. Trust each other. Dare to trust each other, uh, and and believe in each other. But and, and now I want to carry it deeper. I want to carry this deeper than than just uh, about having an affair. I'm saying trust in each other. Dare to because when you trust in each other, it builds each other up. It gives them confidence. In their self. I, I trust in Cindy. I trust in her in her decision making. I trust in, in her thoughts and her, her thinkings about different situations and things going on in our life. But you can only do that because you know that I place my full confidence and trust in God or else I would That's probably true. not even be trustworthy. That's true. Right. 
uh, you know, one, one example that I want to share here is imagine how, how it would affect me when I came up and told Cindy, I said, Cindy, Cindy, uh, I believe God is calling me into the ministry and wants me to be a pastor. And, and, and I want to sell the farm and I'm going to become a pastor and I'm just going to start out working totally free. <laughs> and honey, you're going to have to support us. <clears throat> Friends, let me tell you what. She had to trust in me and know that God was really working in me. She had to trust in me. She had to believe in me because everybody else thought it was complete craziness. Right. From a human point of view, it was. It was, but I'd seen what God had done in your, <coughs> was doing Absolutely. in your life. Yeah. I'm telling you, when you trust in your, in your spouse, when you trust them, when you believe in them, it gives them courage to be the person that they always wanted them to be, yeah. all the, that they always wanted to be. Amen. It's so very important. Amen. So uh, now, with this has been good. So the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, chapter, when you have all these things in a marriage, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this in a better way because this is the take home. When you choose, when you make a choice to do all these things in your marriage, when you cho make a choice, when you choose to be patient with each other, when you choose to be loving and kind to each other, when you choose to 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 not be rude to each other, because that's a choice now. When you choose not to be prideful, uh, when you choose not to be selfish, but instead giving, you know, when, when you choose not to fly off the handle about everything, you know, to brattle that tongue, True. when you make that choice, when you purpose in your heart to forget all those things mm -hmm. that get on your nerves, when you just make it, I'm not going to, just like Jesus, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to remember it no more. It's behind my back in the depth of the sea like he does with our sins. When we make those kind of choices in our life, when we when we when we choose to to be uh, uh, believe in each other, to encourage each other, to be each other's biggest mm -hmm. cheerleader, I'm Cindy's biggest cheerleader, mm -hmm. and she's my biggest cheerleader. Cindy believes in me. I believe in her, and because of that God has been able to use us uh, mm -hmm. to, in in our marriage, but also in the ministry. God has been able to, to use us. When, 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 and when we have all these things, God promises us, you have hope. Amen. You have hope. Yep, hope we have got we hope. And this kind of hope, friends, never fails. Amen. It never fails. Amen. So this has been really good. And I want to give each one of you an opportunity. If you were, if you were going to share one thing, probably the most important thing that you believe that somebody needs to hear out there that will help them Keep the love fire going no matter what. No matter what comes their way, <laughs> what would it be? I'll let Nanny go first. Give and take in equal amounts. Give and take. That's yeah. good. Give and take. Yeah, I love that. I would add something we haven't talked about, but to be a good listener. Mm -hmm. Because we always want our word to be heard, and, and we need to practice listening as much as we do getting our point in yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I think that's really good, Cindy. And I think that's probably worthy of having a whole, uh, whole, uh, it's a whole uh, other yeah, topic. Um, topic. I think it would be yeah. good one there because that's so important being a listener. That's why we um, have two ears and one mouth. That's right. You that's listen what they say. twice as much as you talk. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I, I, I think probably the thing I'm going to close with here is, is, uh, this one right here. Don't ever give up. Amen. Don't ever get up, give up. Satan is wanting to destroy your marriage. But before you give up, invite God in to fight for you. Invite God into your marriage and let him yeah, fight for I'll you. I agree with that. So, all right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, you're a good God. And today, Lord, you have given us some ammunition to fight against the, the enemy. And what he's trying to do is he tries to attack our marriages. Lord, we're praying for all those out there that are watching and listening. And we're asking that all heaven would be released right now to fight their battles. Fight the battles for them, Lord. Fight the battles. And, and uh, where, the, where the enemy's trying to destroy a marriage, may you bring unity. And we thank you for that. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. We'll see you Wednesday night.